talking about the simulation, let's bring in our Mark Sargent, who we yes. love and adore, who was on our show. When was it? A year ago? Yeah, I don't know. Seems and like March, he's got yeah. the most judgmental fans, so let's. I'm calling them out. Oh, come on. Could come you? on. I, I want to hear more. I wanna, <laughs> hey, Mark, are you there? Can you hear us? Good morning, Mark. Uh, no, I can hear you and see you. All right, great. Mark, I'm so Mark, glad you're back. Mark, listen, I want to hear. I want your fa I want your fans more so. I want to hear what they had to say about Shannon because I love when they come on, they slammed her. That was like my favorite, <laughs> favorite part because of the show ever. Because he's um, the most chauvinistic, <laughs> narcissistic, um, demonic, sadistic guy there is. <laughs> All right. Me? No, this one, Tim hey, Ray. Hey, did you, oh, okay. Did you not enjoy that with Mark and, and all no, that? No, I just love you. Did you enjoy coming on our show, or did you get so much heat for being on our no, show? No, no, I no, I, I I did love coming on your show. You got to remember that flat Earth people are pretty rabid, though. Yeah. When it comes to that love, stuff, they're, I, I they're very dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, they're meanly so. Work. There's no grace. Okay, but I'm just I just wanted to point out one thing, and then we're moving on. I did not get hit with a baseball bat in an alley. Thank you a lot to one of your fans who said that they were. <laughs> to do that uh, <laughs> it's not your fault mark hey mark mark right. listen mark enjoy it hey listen so don't I, hit her I know, right? <laughs> so um you know we talked about flat earth last time um and yep. uh we have thomas campbell coming on a little bit and i talked about that and he said i uh, it's great to have thoughts on that but he says he doesn't yep. believe it but without sure. that being said i really want to fo focus more so on today we want to focus on is the uh, simulation uh, uh theory that we're living in a um a fake world what yeah. what's, what's your take and and how do you and if you do believe that, why do you believe it? Uh, yeah, I absolutely believe it. Um, I believed it since day one. I was in the video game industry for some years back in the day. Uh, I know what the entertainment industry is striving to do. And the reason why I believe it, there's there's two reasons. And I, I don't know if you guys got a chance because it was pretty late when I sent them last night because it's kind of last minute. Uh, stuff on the, the double slit experiment yes. and neuroscience versus free will. But uh, what we really found out, and again, yeah, I'm a huge pop culture fan is that the movie The 13th Floor yes. from the late 90s yeah. and or The Matrix are very close, especially The 13th Floor, are very close to what we're doing now. And basically what the, the short version is, is that when we started exploring video games and what we could do with simulations and because every entertainment industry is trying to do it make the perfect video game to where you go in you can't tell you're actually in a game anymore is that we were noticing things that we were doing in video games that are happening around us the the yes. biggest one is how we draw things how we render graphics That's, this is the elon musk thing that i was just explaining well, that's a simulation that you so you're talking about right now the nick bostrom simulation hypothesis uh, yeah, but or the, more or the Mark uh, hypothesis. The, right. Well, no, the old the older version is really the double slit experiment. Uh, it, you remember when you were in school the the stupid old question which nobody gets is if a tree falls in the woods yeah. and no one's there to hear it, does it actually make a sound? Well, when we started getting into computers, we know the answer to that. It's like no, because there is no tree because we didn't draw it. If the double slit experiment basically says if you're not looking at an object it's not being rendered as detailed as it could. And we do that in computers all day long. So when you're, when you're walking around in a computer game, whatever's in front of you is being drawn, but what's behind you is really, really out of focus if it's there at all. Okay. And we see that in real life. That is the double slit experiment. So why, I mean, we do that for conservation of resources, meaning we, we minimize the load on the computer. So whatever's in front of you draws really great because why would you draw anything behind you? Uh, let me give you a better example. Well, uh, but, but if, think of this example. let me ask you a question, quick question here. Cause yeah. I have, I have a property and I have trees that are on my property and yeah. um, I'll walk it periodically and there will be a tree that fell down that I never saw fall down, but it's fallen down. You're going to have to chop sure. it up and cut wood. So sure. does it mean that I, 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 if it was fell down on its own, I mean, I didn't see it happen. Did I do that, create that, or what? I mean, how's that? It, well, it fell down on its own, but because you weren't there to see it, it probably didn't happen in, in, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Real time isn't really the word. So, okay, the double slit experiment, before, what they did there. Yeah. What, what they did the was Mandela. the double slit experiment is they started watching, they fire, they were firing particles through this, this slit in yeah. a, in a steel wall. And they noticed when they had turned their back to it, when they weren't watching it, it was the, the, the balls weren't going through the, the particles weren't going this through the slit. They were actually acting like they were a wave. It was the whole, Oh God, there's so many different ways I could do this. If you've heard of particle versus wave Schroeder's yeah. cat, Schroeder's cat is cat. both dead and alive yes. at the same time. 
fine, but why is that? It's happening. Science says, oh, well, it's science because we can replicate it all the time. It's like, you have no idea why it's happening. Yeah, but it's, we can replicate it. So it's science. Why is it happening in the video game world? We are seeing things in the video game world and we're seeing them here. And that is the premise of the 13th floor of the movie, which is, you know, what the 13th floor of the movie is when you're trying to build a computer simulation, all of a sudden you're realizing it's like, wait, are we in a simulation? <laughs> right. And, and different books have talked about this. So, yes, absolutely. Do I think it's real? Right. Uh, I, you were saying something at the beginning about neuroscience versus, versus free, free will. will. What is that? What does that mean? Oh, that's such a freaky concept. And science <laughs> doesn't even like talking about it because science doesn't like the concept of predestination, hence free will. Right. Do When you're walking around in this oh. world, do you make the choices yourself? Or are you just like, you know, you could choose this particular ice cream and this number and when to go to bed at night. Well, okay, so they did an experiment where, like all scientists, you know, you hook electrodes up to people's brains, you put in a computer, you say, pick a number between one and whatever, and note the time when you pick the number. This is where it gets weird. And then they say, okay, so you, you pick a number, you hit it on the keyboard, and you note when you decided to pick that number. So if I say, pick a number right now. And you say, you say four or okay. three. I wanted right? to pick it. You picked it for me. <laughs> well, that's so now, what, now three? you want to get involved yeah. in a conversation and ask, answer questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what, you, which number are you going to pick? Seven. Three. Oh, wow. Okay. So here's the thing. When the computer was hooked up, I'll try to explain this as best I can. The okay. computer could tell when you decided to pick that number eight seconds ago. Wow. Before it was even asked. Before you even thought. Before, yeah, basically before right. it was even asked. And that you're saying, well, that's impossible. I choose that number. There's nothing before thought, right? You know, and it's like, no, no, there actually is. So the eight seconds is a long time in the computer world. So the question is why? And so I came up with a thought and I put it in, in, in my book, which is, are we living in a, uh, in a simulation or are we living in what I like to call a virtual movie? Because a virtual movie is way more efficient than an actual real-time simulation. Like so the Truman what Show. Is, we were talking about the Truman Show. Yeah. So, But imagine if the Truman Show, you picked all the decisions ahead of time. All you have to do is block the memory out. That's all you have to do. You pick all your major decisions. You know where you're going to go to school and who you're going to marry and how many kids you're going to have. You make all these decisions ahead of time. And then you put in a memory block. You say forget it, you know, and then it becomes the most amazing thing ever. It's so, it, it, the, the closest equivalent I can give to you is you ever watch those stupid videos, it drives me insane because I used to play video games <laughs> for a living, uh, where people, kids will actually, kids are so lazy nowadays, they won't even play their own video games. They'll watch YouTube videos oh, of I other know. people playing uh, video games. Tommy, does that sound familiar? Or, or, they're, or they're watching, they have these games where you watch it and they're not even playing and then you play a little bit at a time, but you're just like watching a movie slash playing a game yeah, once in a yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's way more efficient than actually creating a virtual reality. It's just creating a virtual movie okay. that you're that you are playing and slashing in. So, wow. so you're saying that there's eight seconds ahead. So we're basically like here in radio. So radio talk, we have something called the delay button where we yeah. push it if somebody were to say a bad word or whatever because there's like a 15 second delay. So you're yeah. saying that basically we're living eight seconds in the future before we understand the answer to the question. So right now, like simultaneously there's, there's, we're eight seconds ahead. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And not only, not only that though, what that screams is that you made the decisions beforehand, meaning the, the decisions you think you're making right now in real time. No, no, no. You made them already. Because you made already the asked. Which, because we're already living well, it. Well, it doesn't, doesn't that bring the point, what you're trying to say, and this is what a lot of uh, physicists talk about. We'll ask yeah. Thomas too, is that, Past, present, and future is occurring simultaneously. And if that is to be true, is occurring simultaneously, then why wouldn't you know what's happening in the future in the present moment or what happened in the past in the present moment or what happened in the past in the future? Right, right, right. The, the scientists, you know, they're, they're for, fond of saying it, but the general public doesn't like dealing with it is um, linear time is an illusion. Another illusion. In fact, uh, Einstein was, I think, one of the first, first guys to say it. That, that linear, linear time is an illusion. He goes, but it's a really persistent one. You can't break out of it. Yeah. But uh, so instead of time being a line in, in outside of this world, time is kind of like a, a spoke on a wheel where you're in the center and you can go anywhere you want to simultaneously, but that wouldn't necessarily work. It's hard it's to understand It's interesting that. Yeah. to me that you believe in flat earth, yet you believe in this. So where's the universe if you believe in flat earth? Oh, 
Well, well, no, the reason, the reason I believe in it is because every simulation, a lot of people don't know this. Thank you for, for asking that question, by the way, because I believe forgot it because it's so early here. Good is, morning. Uh, <laughs> it's four in the morning here, guys. Oh my gosh. Thank you for waking up with us. Oh, yes. no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, the, uh, is that every simulation we, we build, whether it's Minecraft or GTA or Fortnite or anything you actually play, every simulation we build on top of being enclosed is absolutely flat. Because it's easy, computer people are lazy. Programs are completely lazy. You don't build the curvature of anything into uh, any sort of simulation. So you're living, every simulation, we'll just use uh, uh, Fortnite as a, or GTA, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Okay. It's, just a big, it's just a big cake box. It's not even round because computers can't draw circles. Ask, ask any of your, your science guys that. It's like computers, which is why pixels are squares. Computers can only do right angles. And because yeah, we can't tell, we don't know how to tell them how to, how to do anything else. And so that's the reason, but you know, so I start out with it's flat because the general public really can't go much further than that. For me, it's like, well, and I, this is the opening thing in the, the video I, I sent, which is if it's flat and it's enclosed, then it's probably virtual. Th that's just how it's built. I mean, I come from the video game world. So, so, right. so uh, and I'll, I'll ask uh, Thomas about why they can't create circles in, in uh, video games. But um, so this is fascinating. So like even Dave says, we don't have free will. Is that true? We don't have free will, at least not so the we're way being pe controlled. people are perceiving well, no, 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 no. It's not that we're being controlled. You're probably controlling it. But you already made the decision. Uh, it's so it's so frustrating to, to talk about this stuff because it's so weird. Uh, it's good. It game. is. It, it's Look at um, let's get weird it's, i can get weirder it's it's that uh it's that you've made the decisions ahead of time so you're put, you're controlling yourself but you but it's but you made the decisions before you even got in here it's like you played you you mapped out the entire game reality movie whatever you want to call it you did it ahead of time and now you're just now you're just watching it while being in it you can't deviate from it which is why you can't do time travel not in here anyway, because you'd, you'd make changes. You, you, you can't. So you don't uh, believe no in the same. Mandela effect. Hold, hold on, hold on. You don't believe that that's that. Oh, that no, no, be I believe in the Mandela effect. Well, but they those, believe it's time travel. They or, Right. Don't they believe that somebody's erasing certain things of the past? more overriding things that already happened. It's, it's not time travel as much as, oh, just, there's so many, um, like if, if you save a document, there's something I used to do back in computers back in the day, which is I used to save, use the same word document and just save over it and over it and over it and over it and over it. Lots of people do this. But eventually what happens is weird stuff starts happening to the word document, stuff that's impossible. And it's, it freaks you out because every computer guy knows, well, it can't happen. Well, it did because I watch it, which is why to this day we still reboot computers because there's just some funky stuff that happens with computer software like ghosts in the machine. So, yeah. Do I believe in the Mandela effect? I, 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 there's a but, joke that I throw at people. I go, you mean the Mandetta effect? <laughs> <laughs> Mandetta. What? So, so, I, so I thought Mark, it were the Mandelta effect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Mark, th this is fascinating to me because uh, I, I – you were saying earlier what you were saying earlier how um, we, the, we 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 create a reality and there's no free will but it's kind of is it, we we already laid it out but isn't it more so that we kind of lay out like a skeleton program what we want yes. to experience like an outline of what we want to experience but all the little details in there is the free will part but the outline is the fateful part that we created in wherever wherever the other uh, dimension we were in before we came into this limited bandwidth it of three-dimensional world yeah, yeah, yeah. It saves time by by doing that. So if you, uh, if you, so you would go into, let's say you go into a room and you say, I want to live this life, and you lay out the the basic framework of it, and then the the program fills in all the little details. You don't have to, for example, check off that you want to brush your teeth every day for twenty five thousand days or however long you live. Yeah. Uh, all the little things get filled in. The ba the big things you you decide. But again, you can't change them once you're in there. Now, I suppose you could, depending on how the system's set up. But the point is, is you set it up ahead of time. It's way more efficient. That way, there's no what's what's the word I'm looking for. Can I ask a question. Dave there's says? no random badness. Uh, You're not going to spend all this time in here to create. Well, uh, let's get into another thing real quick because I don't know how much well, time we well, have. Well, hey, hey Dave, uh, Mark, answer this question. Dave has for you. He says, "Why would people map out a dreary, mundane existence if 
if that, we're, that, we're that, that. perfect I was, that's exactly where I was segwaying into right, yeah. because that leads into a thing. It's like, yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't there, why would you, why would you come in here and do boring, really boring things? Why would you be, no offense. Why would you be a dry cleaner for, for 30 years in a bad part of town? <laughs> right. right? Uh, you, you wouldn't. <laughs> and that's where it gets really scary because then you're talking about NPCs, which are called non-player characters, which, you, which are basically placeholder apps, placeholder programs. Back in the early days of programming, you used to when you used to go along throughout your journey throughout the game, yeah. you, there'd be a note posted on the tree, right? It's like, oh, you have to go here or something on the ground, a rock. You found it. Oh, look, a key. Well, then we replaced those with people that would just stand next to the tree. And, and maybe have some dialogue. Well, then we made it more advanced where these people, you'd have to find them. They'd be walking around doing their, their normal lives. And then we replaced them with people that could actually have fully functioning lives. So the question is, how many people around here are real? And I'm sure you guys know. I mean, you're super, you know, uh, uh, awake and, you know, self-aware and all that. But what I'm saying is there's are NPCs. We, uh... The NPCs are people that are just shadows. Kind of like the that people are going wearing masks. Like the people puppets. wearing masks everywhere. Is that, is that there the you NPCs? go? Oh, you know, I said I said that I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of saying this. Anyone who voluntarily wears a mask and really helped us. Anyone that voluntarily wearing a mask for no apparent reason right now is an NPC. Okay. Absolutely, they are just freaking shadows. If they're where, if you see, it, especially the people that wear them in a car by yeah. themselves with yeah. the windows rolled up. I just want to, seriously, I just want to cream my car into them. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, the NPCs, that there are, the, and then leads into a question, which is how many NPCs so are wait, there? Time In the out, Matrix, time out. Are these very, NPCs, do they have souls? No. So they're just, they're here for us, basically. They are, they are, are basic, I call them small numbers. I call them, uh, because they take very little code to write. They, uh, they are, they, they are, code, um, right? I know a few people. Like so you that. don't think that every single one of us has a soul and like, no. where is God? Do you okay, believe in so, aliens? Oh, oh, Wait, time out. Okay. Let me get a question. In. <laughs> Obviously, I disagree where, with that. Okay. Well, you can talk about it okay. in a moment. Do, do I, there, if they have souls, they are very, very young. Okay. Let's put it that way. They, if they may be developing, but come on, there's people out I there, you know, full well are just, just in stasis. They're just, they're just <laughs> taking up space, <laughs> taking so, up so air. You think that they are like very young, basically like reincarnation. Like they yeah. have just not been reincarnated. They're like, or brand they're new. brand new okay. potentially. Sure. So, do, so, do I believe it? Do I believe in God? Yes. I yes, just want to know where you think God and do you believe in aliens? Yes, but not from, well, because I'm doing the flat earth thing, not from Jur Jupiter and Mars and Venus. I just think they're older versions of us. I think they're people that have rented this apartment that are older civilizations. I mean, come on, there's, there's evidence of, of older civilizations that predate our history all over, you know, sunken cities off Japan, of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Aborigines, Bimini Road, yeah. Puma Puku. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, so, uh, so, Mark, this is fascinating because you know these uh, we call them NPCs. What are they called? NPCs, non-player characters. Non -player Very characters. easy to look up. They, okay. they've been so, so, for years. So, uh, in the let's just let's just talk about gaming here for a second. So, because yeah. uh, Tommy, and you could jump in if you have any questions on that too. But because those these NPCs. In some gaming, they actually grow. They become more than just an NPC. They, they they either get inputted data, or I don't know what you do in gaming. You make more of a character out of them, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Scripted, scripted, right? So, yeah. so in this simulation that we're living in real life, and I think um, even Thomas Campbell, who's coming on here in, a, in about an hour, guys, uh, he talks about Minecraft and how we are, you know, even out of body. He brings in out of body experiences. How we it actually assists in this kind of, you know, this simulation that we're living in but yep. there has to be some type of organic level of free will involved in the simulation otherwise we, we wouldn't have the experiences that we're having like i i could make one decision creative decision and change everything in my life at that one point you know and affect yes. other people's and lives. affect other people's lives not just yep. and, and affect the npc's lives yep. you know yep 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 so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in GTA, if you in Grand Theft Auto, which I don't play because I think it's immoral. 
<laughs> yeah, it's no, where it's YouTube like if you want to take your car and drive it on the sidewalk and kill twenty NPCs, <laughs> great. That's you can do that. That's See, part of it. That throws yeah. me off. It's like life isn't a video game. Then why? Why, why well, are we here? Why are we here? Why do you think that we exist? Why are you here, Mark? Really, you're going to go to that question <laughs> already? All right, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. You know what? That's I fine. Freaking Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> hell yeah, I'm going there. <laughs> no, well, well, that's all. That's the other thing, by the way. You don't <laughs> tell people that they're in potentially a Grand Theft Auto because then, you know, there's you have the potential of people just losing and, yeah, and going I don't off. Yeah, because want to be the, the prostitute pool. that gets murdered. And, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, See? Me, yeah. See? You know what I'm talking about. I, Grand Theft Auto, I still to this day, I just look in horror when I was like, oh, please, no. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful game, okay, well, but what, my what, God. What, 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 okay, so why are we question? here? Why why, yeah. why are we here? So why, why would you create something like this? I am a huge believer of dualism. Uh, you can't really experience like, heat like without Taoism? cold. But, but, what? Like Taoism? No, no it's like dualism. Yeah, dualism. dualism. Da okay, Tao. Okay. Dao. Well, so so basically everything has to have its opposite. Okay. Uh, the hero has to have a villain. Pain without pleasure, hot without cold, light without shadow. <gasps> which is, if this world is ninety nine percent conflict. And I saw her. I see you walking back there. <laughs> no, the, uh, one else does. <laughs> no one else does. <laughs> was that Ashley? Yeah, yeah. it was Ashley. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. <laughs> the, um, uh, she, she called me. She was the one that woke me up. <laughs> She's like, can you come on early? <laughs> like, what? What time is it? Okay, the, uh, so, no, so, okay, you got so, right and wrong. You got black and white. You right got, and wrong. You got, so you know, if opposites. this world is 99% conflict, meaning it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how smart, how talented you are, you always have something to complain about. People with money always obsess about money. If you're super beautiful, you're staring in the mirror all day and powerful, you don't want to give it up and so on and so on. If this world is 99% conflict, then whatever's outside of here has to be the opposite. It has right. to be 99.9% .9 free will. It has to be on an unlimited universe. Call it heaven, Shambhala, Nirvana, the, the perfect realm, whatever you want to call it. But eventually things get stale and you can't appreciate it until you come to a place which is the opposite, which is like this. Uh, it's kind of like the, the genie question, and I know we don't have too much time. Uh, we do. You're let, fine. Let, okay, let's say uh, I was a genie, and I gave you uh, three wishes, and you're super smart. So you say, oh, I want one of my wishes on unlimited wishes. It's like, yeah. damn you. <laughs> so you start wishing for all sorts of stuff. And you whatever fantasies you ever thought of in your life, you're, you're fulfilling them. Boom, boom, boom. Margaret is on the beach and sex with every movie star you ever wanted, wow. and you own a sleep. Now now we know what's going on inside your brain. And well, mine. No, and no, yours, no, I'm just man. giving generic stuff. You'd be yeah. amazed how many people wish for money right off the bat. It's like a million dollars. It's like, wow, you're an NPC. That doesn't even buy you anything. <laughs> no, it doesn't anymore. A billion dollars. <laughs> like, okay, fine. You get a Gulf Stream. So anyway, after how many wishes can you have? Nobody makes it to a million wishes. Eventually, I you run out of ideas. You run. The, I believe the universe runs off of novelty. Meaning, what's new? It's one of those things we always say, hey, man, what's new? People, I mean, look what, what's right out now. We're watching things on Netflix that are dubbed in Spanish. And it's like, oh, my God. And it's like, well, I don't know if you guys do. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> so <laughs> if you watch enough Netflix, eventually you run out of English. There's not being much being creative nowadays. Anyway, so the genie keeps asking you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And eventually you run out of ideas. And you come to the genie. I'm just giving this is a simple version. And, I, and you say, hey. I'm out of ideas. What do I do? I'm out of wishes. I'm, I'm bored. This is perfect. Realm is driving me insane. There was a Twilight Zone episode based off of this loosely. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and, he, and he says, yeah, you know what? I got something for you. You're going to hate it, but it'll be great. He goes, I'm going to send you to this place. The limited lifespan, suffering everywhere. You can't escape it. You're, it's going to be horrible. I go, what? So what's it? He goes, if you get out of there, you know, stay as long as you can. But when you get out of there, this, this realm will be absolutely wonderful. You know, it'll, it, you'll appreciate it all over again. And I go, what's the catch? The catch is you don't even get to remember you asked me that question. Wow. And he snaps his fingers and you are there. See, that because to you me can't is like God. Cake. That to me is God. And then when you die, you go to heaven because it's beautiful. There you go. Uh, you can't you can't have your cake and eat it too, which is one of your probably one of your follow up questions, which is why don't we get to remember what the other realm was like? And that's because if you remembered what your other other realm was like, everyone would bail. Easy, you know, it's like the first time of hardship. It's like this life sucks. Where's a bridge? I'm jumping. Right. <laughs> and, and it would be like uh, the Tom Cruise movie, um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, where he just kept dying over and over and over and over. Oh yeah. Uh, 
And that's, that's, I believe it's cyclical. I believe that's why we're here. It's dualism. You, you are here to appreciate what you had, you know, 5,000 years in the other dimension, 70 years here, 5,000 right. years in the other dimension. So, so, so we, you believe that when we die, we get to go back to that realm, basically. Yep. Okay. Yep, I have and then, no doubt. So the so that kind of goes in line with what you believe about soul contracts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that you, because if you're in that other realm, you come here to appreciate what you had there. I think the programming yeah. is much more intricate than any other computer version we've ever created here on Earth. I think there's so many dynamics being played, you know, from aliens to, you know, entities to channeling to, uh, you know, what's going on in this reality to the, you know, the blue bloods. I mean, there's so many dynamics involved that I don't think we ever truly ever create a simulation of what we're experiencing. And this is the ultimate, no, no, this is no. The ultimate it, simulation. It, isn't it? It is. It is. I, and I'm, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I believe that God is a programmer. You know, God is the <laughs> ultimate programmer. The, the programming here is very, yeah, very elaborate. There's so many subtle nuances. It would take us forever. But we're, but again, that's what we strive to do. I also don't think that we'll ever get there because if you got there, you would completely, again, it would turn on the 13th floor. You would absolutely lose perception. It, uh, it was a, do you remember the old comic strip Dilbert? From back in the day, Dilbert and Dogbert. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, tech, tech support guys. Yeah. Anyway, the, the guy that wrote that, he w wrote this wonderful forward. He goes, the last invention that we would ever create is the holodeck. Because that was the only from Star Trek Next yeah, Gen. Yeah, because, exactly, of, yeah. because, because once that happens, and we've had movies that have got touched on this, right. no one would care about anything else. Civilization would collapse because all anyone would ever want to do is make just enough money to jack into the system. Right. That's all anyone would, would there's ever, movie, ever. There's a movie out on that. There's a movie. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, there was a Bruce Willis movie yeah, where yeah, they all yeah, played the yeah. robot version, perfect robot yeah. versions of themselves. But yeah, there's sci-fi novels that have yeah. touched on this. But he's absolutely right. People are notoriously lazy, and they're everyone's really, really big into escapism. And we're talking about the ultimate escapism. Right. Um, it'll never, for us, it'll never happen because of the health issues. They want to plug into the brain directly, and that would never, ever be allowed. Same reason why um, it all comes down to money and, and lawsuits. Is, like, is, the same is, reason is, why we don't have the purge, is, because the insurance oh, companies gosh. would never allow it. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that like the Matrix within the Matrix, though? I mean, here it is. It's like these different levels of dreams, you know? Like, yes. So it's like, how far down can you go? And to me, it seems pretty insane. I think we're, we lose our purpose. And I do think technology has been a overall a detriment to the human soul spirituality i think as we get lost in technology although we're using it right now to talk to you but as we get lost in technology um we lose our our drive and ability to want to telepathically communicate with you say i was able to telepathically communicate with you wouldn't that be much more efficient than us using zoom right now um and yeah so, but, yeah but, yeah but and, and by we're not going to develop that mark unless we unless we get away from this technology very this insightful I'm, I, that's, that's, yeah, it's, it's a great, that's a great statement. You're, you're right. Okay, We're, I have a question for both of you guys while yeah. you guys are just agreeing. Yeah, we have on a couple everything. minutes left, Do you <laughs> believe in time loops that you can be stuck in a time loop over and over again? In oh, the only way? Day? Sh Shannon, yeah. Shannon's stuck in the 70s, but uh -huh. go ahead. Yeah. No, do you believe in honestly time loops? <laughs> okay, go ahead. What is your take? Uh, if it's an what? educational it? time, if it's an educational time loop, possibly, but that would well, be a living hell. I mean, my God, there's been Outer Limits, Twilight Zone, well, Outer Limits, Groundhog Day, Edge of Tomorrow. There's all sorts of time loop movies. In fact, Pine, I think there Palm was Palm Springs is the new one on Hulu. It's phenomenal. Uh, wait, what's it called? Palm Springs. Check it out. It's oh, so I'm, I'm definitely going to look it up. Yeah. The, um, no, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in a conscious time loop because you would go insane. If you all of a sudden woke right. up and it's like, you know, hear that Sonny and Cher song every, every morning, you'd lose your freaking mind but after a while. But doesn't quantum physics believe in that? They believe in time loops, but the question is, is it a conscious self-aware time loop? Do you know you're in it? What? Yeah, I'm uh, sure you so, get stuck in it. That's a good question for Tom. Yeah, sure. So I mean, Star Trek, Star Trek Next Gen did one where yeah. they, well, the thing was they didn't know. The only one that knew was Data. Yeah. Data will yeah, all of a sudden yeah. realize because he, that was he, a great he episode. started refiguring it out. Yes. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, do I believe in time loops? Sure. Do I believe that people can get stuck in them and know that they're stuck in them? Eh. Maybe I, I don't know. That seems like an, a weird punishment. I mean, suppose God could throw but though, one of those. But don't you think, <laughs> though? Last question here, and, and we we got to get going to the good news here. But last question here, or at least for me, yeah. Shannon may have yeah. another one. Um, is uh, don't you think, though, the fact that we're so focused on 
on um, how this simulation working and is there a God and, and how does this work with the aliens? We're so focused on how it works rather than just allowing ourselves to uh, enjoy the simulation experience and mm -hmm. and and grow from it. I mean, wouldn't I mean maybe we have our wrong goals here as a society, or at least as a human being, uh, to try and figure out how things work rather than just enjoy the ride. Yeah, that's kind of a nerd thing. Nerds will <laughs> dissect. Well, no, 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 no. It's no. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Nerds dissect just about everything. You know, uh, they're yeah, the ones that do. Curiosity is like, fun. I love being curious and in asking it, questions. It, it, no, and and the, yeah, that's the balance. Kind of like the the engineer versus scientist thing. It's like you know, should we? You know, not you know. Do we make the atomic bomb <laughs> or do we do we make it because we can or do we look at the, the ramifications of making it? And yeah, yeah, it's it's that's an excellent question. Um, you're right. We should enjoy it. I don't think the NPCs enjoy it as much as you know, I, last thing for you, because, again, I know you're running out of time and you can delve into this later. I think there's three levels of NPCs. I think there's basics, the shadows that are rolling around. Uh, they have very little deviation, like a heart monitor, in you know, you know, in their uh, routines. I think there's um, uh, interactives, people that, that can make decisions, like you guys. You can you can make decisions and you can interact with with NPCs. But I also think there's a higher level uh, that's the, the most dangerous of them, which is called the creatives. And you know those, these are very, very creative people that their heart monitors are way beyond the safety limits. And they either die from overdose because they got too successful right. or they die overdose because they, their life plummeted into oblivion huh. and i think between those john three the, yeah there you go john Belufi, river phoenix yeah people the, that the, just can't the 20, handle the, it they're smart the yeah us, they can't right? handle it that's smart but i think creative, but i think they make that decision speed. going in which yeah. is okay you can, you can have this amazing you know burnout rather than to fade away type deal <laughs> so. i feel like right now we just told everybody to commit suicide though we did no 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 let me let me end with one thing i enjoy the simulation man i love it here i don't want to go anywhere else the Mayans, well, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't, though. Uh, the, the Mayans had this wonderful saying, which I thought was so cryptic, which was, it's not in, like live a good life or live a moral life, is live as long as you can. Mm. And, and, but I, I think they were saying that because in the simulation, again, you want to stay as long as you can, hold out for as long as you can, because you will appreciate the uh, the unlimited universe much much more wow interesting uh, mark, mark thank you so much how can people follow you and find you and research you and all that jazz easiest way is to just go into either google you know go into youtube but any search engine will work type in uh, flat earth mark you'll find me uh my youtube channel's out there a documentary behind the curves and books on amazon uh, all sorts of podcasts. You, you'll find me. I watched your documentary real quick. And then do you get heat from a lot of straight up flat earthers for what you believe about the simulation? No, no, okay. I don't. A lot of, a lot of uh, be, believe it too, you know? Well, because, because no, I opened with, you know, it's like, look, it's, it's because the simulation has to be flat because programmers are lazy. Yeah. They, they will assign everything flat. <laughs> Fortnite, flat, everything. Minecraft, absolutely flat, no obviously. Curves, no curves. Well, listen, no Mark, I, I think you're a stand-up guy. I really appreciate what you're doing. I'm glad you're out there, and I'm glad you're not an NDC. So I'll tell you out there. NCP? NPC. NPC. Non-player non character. <laughs> I need you to sign an NPC before you hang out with us. Come on. Now. I got to play more video games. Oh my All right, guys, we got the good news coming up here. And then Thomas Campbell in about 30 minutes. Don't miss that, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.